and welcome to a loose, casual edition of Ben's Junk. Because even Ben's Junk needs a little break every now and then. Anyway, uh, I mentioned loose and casual, and I mean it. I am going to take my sweet time with this. So as such, this opening segment, and I'm not joking, may very well go in upwards of 10 minutes. We'll just see where it leads here. I got a long way to go with the story here. Uh, If I remember, I will put in a timestamp and you can just jump straight to the review. Anyway, uh, for those of you who are more brave and more in tune with the Ben's Junk aesthetic, let me just uh, chat for a while here. This is the uh, box for the Denon RCD N10 Mini Stereo. I suppose I ought to give you a a quick little look at it. Anyway, this is going to be the third mini stereo that I've covered on Ben's Junk and that I've owned in five and a half years. And it's not because I have some thing for, you know, getting a new stereo every couple of years, but they just keep dying on me, and it really annoys me, actually. So anyway, uh, how I got into this whole mini stereo thing, back in the summer of 2018, I moved here, and as it worked out, the bedroom was going to have to be the main hub of Oddity Archive again. So not just my bedroom, but also my office and my set, you know, where I shoot my host segments. And the difference was that the current bedroom is two-thirds to three-quarters the size of the old one, so I couldn't bring along into that room my old main stereo, which was also my home theater. Um, Yeah, I was going to have to downsize a little. And knowing I was going to spend a lot of time in there, yeah, it seemed like a good idea to have amenities, you know, a, a TV and a little stereo and just make it as, you know, homey as possible. So anyway, I uh, remembered, well, first off, I put in one of those Ikea shelves that people buy explicitly to put LPs on, and that's what I did too. But I uh, remembered they used to have these stereos when I was in high school in the early 2000s, and I thought they were the coolest things ever. I used to see them at Best Buy. Couldn't afford one. They were like seven, dollars $800 at the time. But they'd be like eight inches wide and a foot deep, and it would be a, a CD player, AM, FM radio, and you know, kind of a, a receiver just you know really boiled down. And I figured, well, you know, that's uh, it got to be like a week old newspaper. You know, it's not old enough to be of historical value. It's not old enough to be vintage and retro and all that. And it's not modern enough to be hip and cool still. So, yeah, I should be able to get a real nice price on a used one of those things. And I did. And I got an Onkyo. And I think I spent more on the shipping. But the CD player part of it did not work. But I didn't really care. It had inputs, analog and optical. And what I settled on in the short term was running my Blu-ray player through it for a CD player. But it became my daily driver soon enough. And it just kind of got under my skin after a while. And I wanted to see if I could, you know, fix up that CD player. Opened it up and whoever owned it before me apparently just played a ton of CDs on it because the laser was shot. And so I cross-referenced the part, ordered the modern equivalent of the part, installed it myself, and a CD might play for a few seconds, but that was about it. I, I didn't really fare any better. And I was tired of throwing money at it, so I figured I would just try another one of those things. So then I got a Denon... Uh, Denon... Uh, what was it, a UDM30 or 40? I did a Ben's Junk on that too at the time. But I really liked that thing. And that thing happened to work 100%. So CD player, decent AM, FM radio, analog and optical inputs, had an input for a subwoofer if I wanted to add one. And I just really liked the thing. And here's where I'm going to really go off the rails here. Uh, My music has, my own music has been known to kill people. I guess it kills equipment too. So a few months ago, I put out the Oddity Archive soundtrack, 
all original stuff. And I, uh, I should note that I put this out on, of course, out for download, but on CD and cassette, and I've still got copies of both. So if you're so inclined and you want to take the gamble at possibly ruining your equipment, yeah, benminot.bandcamp.com. And I should also note that, uh, it, hey, Techmoan, V Westlife, LGR, or any of you guys, if you happen to catch this and you need something to play in a, a stereo review or something, you can use this. I'm totally okay with it. Shouldn't give you any real guff from YouTube. Uh, one song YouTube mistook for the intro of, uh, one of Weird Al's uh, more obscure parodies, but otherwise it was okay. So anyway, uh, getting sort of back on track here, I got my 100 copies of the CD, and I dutifully took one, was going to make it my own personal reference copy, and did. And I put the thing in my trusty old Denon, and I got nothing. And my panicked first thought was, oh my god, I've got 100 dead discs. But then I realized, oh, well, maybe I should put something else in there, something, you know, truly mass manufactured and see how that fares. Yeah, no better. So anyway, that was my second one down. I, I did take it apart to try and figure out what was wrong with it. But the laser was good. The motor seemed to be good, but just something wasn't communicating. It would spin all the way up to speed and it would just conk out and... I just wasn't going to go any farther with it. So I went looking for a new, proper new, new mini stereo. And the pickings were kind of slim, shock of shocks, uh, these days in the snoring 20s. And my options were a Philips one, and that was still one of those 8-inch deals. But I've had rotten luck with pretty much every Philips thing I've ever owned, and I just didn't want another Philips piece of gear. Otherwise, there was some cheap Chinese thing that had a bunch of different names slapped on it, but it was clearly the same model, and I didn't want that. So otherwise, my option was the Denon RCD N10 or N12. And I went with the 10 because it was on sale for, I, I believe, $350, down from, I think, $550. Now, I should note, yes, I have seen Tecmoan's review on the N11, which I think is the European equivalent to the N10. Uh, there is no N11 that I can find for North America. Anyway, uh, he was not too happy with it, but at the same time, he likes a lot more toys, with things. And he also is more into aesthetics than I am. I tend to be more into function. So I thought, well, you know, if it plays my CDs and it's got a decent AM FM radio in it and, you know, inputs and all. Yeah, cool. And oh, wait, what's all this? Oh, maybe I can kind of drag myself kicking and screaming into the 21st century here. And uh, I mean, I knew realistically they weren't going to have, say, a Sirius XM receiver built into this thing. But uh, yeah, I'm sure it's going to mean doing the app thing and all the usual modern junk. But uh, yeah, hopefully it's more reliable. It's brand new. Nobody's had a chance to screw it up but me. And best of all, I've played this on it a few times now, and it's still going. So fingers crossed. Anyway, uh, let me take a cut here. I will chat some more, but I'll have all this set up. I shot a ton of B-roll when I was doing tests on this thing, and I will cut it in where appropriate. So yeah, I'll do another chat, albeit more of a proper review, and then we'll close things out with a little bit of live demo stuff, kind of the, the best and worst. And I should note that the stuff I like about this unit, I really like. The stuff I don't like about it, I really hate. So, a uh, love-hate relationship right out of the box. And speaking of boxes, you're probably tired of staring at this stupid box. So, yeah, let's take a cut and we'll move on. For all intents and purposes, I guess you could say this is my final setup for this system. In that I am not adding anything special to this. I'm just going to use my same old bookshelf speakers that I've been carrying over since the Onkyo. 
Uh, how funny, my $40, $50 bookshelf speakers that I got in 2018 have been the best and longest lasting part of any of this mini stereo junk. Uh, but I, I love these speakers, actually. Anyway, uh, I suppose we should talk sound, shouldn't we? Well, I, I have gotten very used to these speakers over the last several years, so I kind of know how they respond to certain frequencies and stuff. And actually, it's, it's pretty flat. I, that's one of the reasons I like these speakers. Uh, really the best you can get for $50 speakers. And uh, I did not notice any overemphasis or de-emphasis on any frequencies of anything I threw at this. So I'm saying that frequency response is right on target. Uh, as far as these speakers are concerned, the these are rated for 70 hertz to 20 kilohertz, and I have done sweeps on these. And amazingly, even at my age and with all the rock and roll and stuff, I can still by some miracle hear up to 20k. And yeah, I was able to hear everything on this. Now, as far as anything below 70, because you can go down to 20 on a CD or most any digital thing, um, I, I don't feel a need to hook up a subwoofer. One, because I'm just not a big bass freak. And also, I listen mostly to oldies, classic rock sort of stuff, and there just isn't much down there. You know, most of the bass info, as we would think of it, is like, what, in the 200 range and something like that. So yeah, I'm not into the whole, you know, real room-shaking, you know, club vibe. But, uh, yeah, I, I suppose I could hook up a speaker, you know, a subwoofer to it and see how it fared, but I just, I don't feel a need to. Anyway, um, so when it comes down to the sound from the unit itself, I'm not noticing anything wrong. I'm not noticing any distortion, you know, if I crank it or play around with it. I am not noticing any, uh, say, interference, you know, maybe from Wi-Fi or something like that. I'm not hearing anything that this would introduce into a signal to render it not so nice sounding. So I'm going to give this an A on the audio front then things start to kind of drop off as far as I'm concerned with this thing. So uh, let's start with uh, my eternal struggle, the CD player. Now, I guess I don't know how really true this is, but I've been hearing over the last few years that I guess there are some CD players out there now that do not do gapless playback anymore. So say you got Dark Side of the Moon or uh, Sgt. Peppers or something, you know, where the songs all segue into each other. You know, it'll add uh, some nasty silence between tracks where it should not be. This thing handles gapless playback just fine. Unfortunately, in my absolute number one gripe about this, to me, this should be absolutely standard on a CD player, and I thought was up until this point. Uh, that would be the ability to rewind from track to track. So say you're on track five out of a 10 track CD. I should be able to hold down the rewind button and have it carry back into track four, the end of track four. Can't do that with this. It will stop at the beginning of whatever track you're on. And I don't know why that is. I think that's terrible. I, I thought that was an absolute standard, but... I guess it's not, or at least it's not anymore. And then some stuff that I don't care so much about, but is just nice to have. Uh, this does not do CD text. So, you know, you pop, you know, if you still got a CD player in your car, if it's from maybe the mid 2000s on, you pop it in and it'll show you, for some CDs, the name of the track, you know, that sort of thing. Well, my little archive soundtrack which also has some cuts that segue into it uh, getting back to that point uh this does have cd text so uh if you bought a hard copy or if you purchase a copy of this and you have the appropriate gear you should be able to have the song titles come up and the artist name and album title come in when you first pop in the cd if it's advanced enough but anyway uh, no CD text, but uh, then again, I don't consider that to be all that important. 
Anyway, uh, on the CD note, this will do data disks. And I made one just for the occasion. I, I've never needed to do a data CD before, but I just made an MP3 on a data CD copy of the archive soundtrack, popped it in here, and it's just fine. Now, of course, in the case of something like MP3, uh, and it's, you know, it's just files on a data CD, if you are trying to play something straight through and it's supposed to segue, yes, you are going to get that uh, unwelcome moment of silence between tracks, but that is to be expected on a data CD, and especially for a format like MP3. Speaking of MP3s, there is a USB port in there, so you can stick in a flash drive. And I took one of my just kind of cheap, low-capacity flash drives, and it needs to be formatted for FAT32 or 16. But I just took some random MP3s and WAV files and stuck it in here. And granted, I did not do anything esoteric, but it handled everything just fine. It played... Uh, you know, obviously MP3 is just fine. And I should note that if you have metadata on an MP3, you know, it's got the artist name and the song title and the album title and so on, it does come up on screen and it scrolls and it's really nice. But if you don't, like some of the just random WAV files I stuck on, it was, you know, title.wav. So uh, that was kind of a, a pleasant surprise to have on there. Now, on that note, uh, as far as text goes, on uh, the radio front, uh, it does mention SDR in the manual. So uh, the, if you, like in your car, a lot of FM stations will, it'll show you the name of the artist, the name of the song and all that. It, I guess it's supposed to be there, but it just doesn't come up. So, but it also may be a weak signal issue. Uh, I do have one massive issue with the tuner on this thing. Uh, and this this picks up stations just fine, but I don't know if it's if I have some weird esoteric setting on that I shouldn't. I can't find anything in the manual, which I should note you have to download. It only comes with a quick start guide. Um, it, everything's in mono on FM radio for some strange reason. So I don't know if I'm just not getting a strong enough signal or if this thing just only does mono for some strange reason on FM radio. And I, I consider that a very, very major problem. But uh, at the same time, there's internet radio on here, and I'll get back to that. So anyway, on the radio front, my, uh, my usual criteria for a decent radio tuner is, can I pick up KISD 98.7 based out of Pipestone, Minnesota, about an hour away? I've mentioned them before. And can I pick up 93.3 here in town? And I forget the call letters, but they call it Sunny Radio. And that has a very weak tower. They have AM and FM versions, but the FM one is pretty weak. But if I can pick them up at home, I consider it a success and I consider it a good radio. So... Once I have the antenna hooked up, yeah, I can pick those up, but again, everything's still in mono. Even the real big uber-corporate 100,000-watt powerhouse-type stations that we have, I, it's all just in mono. I do not get it. So if you have any answers on that front, let me know. Anyway, uh, on the top of this, and I'll uh, splice in the picture... There's only a few choices you can make, and everything's one of those kind of touch deals, so it's not a proper button. So, as such, you're truly going to need the remote. And uh, let's talk about uh, this thing kind of trying to con you. So, uh, you can do radio presets the old-fashioned way. But you would think, uh, if you can read the remote well enough from where I'm holding it, um, if you hit the favorites, that, oh, you can just make and or retrieve a preset from there. But it tries to talk you into something called Heos, which uh, seems to be made by Denon and Marantz. I noticed a few companies listed in there. And I assume that's how you pronounce it. I think they're going for a Greek sort of thing. 
But anyway, um, it says, do you have a Heos account? If so, please input your password and all that, your username and all. And uh, okay, so I went and downloaded the app. And as it turns out, it's really meant more for people who own multiple pieces of modern Denon gear to make them communicate with each other. So I, I'm thinking, why would I need this just to do a basic preset? Well, you can do a basic preset, but they hit it under the option button right at the tip of my index finger here. So that's one thing you do have to be aware of. Now I did uh, dink around with the Heos app a bit and I was able to pull up like tunes I just had randomly sitting on my iPad and it all works okay, but it stutters. So I guess it doesn't work okay. It communicates, but uh, it's not a very good uh, communication. Uh, the first thing I think it randomly gave me was uh, Paul Simon, You Can Call Me Al, which is now just called You Call Al. That's uh, kind of what I got stuck with there. But that is something to be aware of when you're dealing with this. So otherwise, as far as uh, your phone goes, smartphone, tablet, um, you can pull up by way of your phone and you don't seem to need a special app for it. You can just uh, use the Bluetooth setting on your phone or whatever. And yeah, you can, if you've got, in my case, I, the only streaming thing that I consider myself to have would be Sirius XM. I, I do have Amazon, but that's just because I, I happen to have Prime, Amazon Prime. But uh, I was able to pull up uh, yeah, my favorites, you know, from XM, I, I will spare you the rant about where uh, Deep Tracks landed recently. But anyway, uh, the Bluetooth stuff was nice, but I'm not used to just having my phone on hand. I guess that makes me a bad millennial. But I, yeah, that might be uh, something I'll have to keep in mind when I'm using this, that I, I might want my phone handy. Uh, I should note, as far as the Heos thing goes, I'm probably going to delete that from my phone and uh, my tablet when I'm done making this video. I just, I, I don't foresee myself really needing it. Otherwise, uh, if you have your own server, the one major thing I could not test with this is supposedly, according to the manual, if you have your own server, you can make the server and this communicate and play whatever songs you keep or audio you keep on that server. So something to keep in mind if you're a real hardcore tech geek, but I don't have anything like that. Otherwise, uh, the basics, I was able to plug stuff into the analog and optical inputs and everything worked just fine. I didn't notice any interference or any sign of poor performance. So yeah, I'm going to call that a winner. Uh, you can do things like set the clock and stuff on here, but I haven't really bothered with it yet. And I probably won't because I just don't want it on screen. I don't want this staring me down in the middle of the night, especially when I've already got a, a normal a, alarm clock. So anyway, that's everything I can think of offhand for all this. And uh, let me take another cut here. I'll reposition the camera a bit and I'll just, I'll do some demo stuff. We'll kind of go over what I think the greatest hits and misses are with this so you can see it in real time. And uh, we'll call it a day after that. Okay, just for a lark here, let's do a few little demonstrations in real time. Uh, nothing that's audio dependent, but just stuff I, I kind of would like to take a little stroll through and discuss a bit. But uh, anyway, before I turn this on, uh, of course it's black and the way it's designed, it's that kind of mirrored uh, sort of thing. It's just an absolute dust and fingerprint magnet. I, I wish there were other colors available, but at least when I got to this, black was it. I, I would have chosen white, I guess, just because the dust would have been less visible. I really don't want to put a cover on this thing. Anyway, I'm rambling. Let's get going here. Turn it on. The top lights up just very briefly. Uh, see all. I, I'd love to know what the significance of that name is. 
Okay, so I had it in CD mode when I turned it off, but I want to discuss uh, some internet radio stuff. That's where I was having the most fun. That's where I was just digging around constantly. And the first thing it pulls up is uh, a, a station from the UK, I believe. Unfortunately, once I have this in the favorites, it, uh, it in the top line of text, it should be there. But it uh, just didn't carry over once I made it um, a favorite. So can I get to know you better? Mark Winter. Uh, yeah, I picked this station because I was hearing stuff I wasn't uh, familiar with. Any way you want it. The Dave Clark Five. Okay, so some some deeper cuts there. I uh, I won't turn on the audio. Uh, now, I should be able to hit the info button at the bottom right here and the top line of text should go over to whatever specs so in this case a real nice high quality 320 kilobit per second stream and uh hell i'll just uh, crank the volume for a minute here and see if uh, the wolfman aka dave clark doesn't come and kill me I can't even hear it with my microphone where I'm at. But, um, yeah, if you've seen Dave Clark any time in the last 30 years, he turned into a werewolf. Anyway, uh, if you want to uh, get to the list and you don't want to be stuck with the Heos thing, you know, where it says favorites, uh, I found that you hit back if you want to dig up whatever presets you've already done or option uh, if you want to make a new one, but we'll do back here and I'll pick favorites from the list. Now you'll notice like KISD here, this is still internet radio. These are the internet streams, but I did load it up with uh, the internet streams of a lot of these local stations just for reliability purposes. So I wouldn't be um, at the mercy of it. I did not choose to kick back to that screen. So you, you have to make a decision fairly quickly, so we'll just bring up 98.7 here. This is only 64 kilobits per second, and it uh, looks like they're doing the Beatles at the moment. But uh, yeah, the big news talk station, uh, 106.3, that's actually based out of Yankton, a couple uh, hours south, and their stream is only 32 kilobits per second. Um, a, a pretty good classic hit station. I hear some stuff I don't hear a whole lot elsewhere. I, and I can pick this up for the most part in the car, but I cannot get this at home. So it is nice to be able to pull this up here. I wonder what they're playing right now. Eddie Money. Okay. At least I could hear it. Uh, let's see, 97.3, big corporate classic hit station and not world music. 1027, big corporate classic rock station. Uh, here's a fun one, KXLG. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not shooting this in the middle of the day, but uh, this station is based out of Watertown, which is three hours north of me, I think. I cannot pick it up in the car. But uh, if you're familiar with the uh, comedy troupe, The Whitest Kids You Know, uh, one of the members is the daytime weekday disc jockey on this station. And it's just kind of a general adult contemporary station. But uh, he can be amusing to listen to if he's not in a great mood on a given day. And it's a shame it's not the middle of the day. I, I might consider calling him up and harassing him. You didn't hear that from me, though. Anyway... Uh, of course, I've mentioned WXYG, the station I visited last summer. There is no real metadata with them, and it's a very weak 32 kilobit stream. Of your music listening life, we're excited to keep on getting into the music with you every Monday through Saturday. It's like they're doing a rerun of uh, Into the Music, uh, Al Neff's show, who we met last summer. Uh, which they used to run in Denver. I think they might still actually run it there today, but uh, they did when I lived there. Anyway, what else have I gotten here? Uh, some of the foreign stations. Unfortunately, it doesn't say where they're from once I get them into the favorites, which is rather annoying. 
But uh, I picked out some of these just because they were playing stuff that I just don't hear or had never heard before. Station bumper there. Can't say I recognize what they're playing at the moment. And it can take a, a while for it to catch up. And for some streams, it can take 30 seconds to a minute to kick in at all. So... Um, Anyway, I, I cannot read that title. I believe this station is French. Uh, that's certainly what it looks like and what the name would imply. Uh, let's see here. I think this one's from Germany, if memory serves. Let's see what it gives me. Uh, credence. <laughs> guess they're doing some more familiar stuff. Uh, the one that kind of got my attention was this ABC Oldies Radio, which uh, seems to be UK. Uh, but they're doing just kind of stuff that everybody knows. Elvis Presley in the ghetto. That was disappointing going through all these stations from Australia and New Zealand and Germany and stuff. And they're playing the same stuff you hear on, you know, the radio here in the States. So nothing uh, too special, unfortunately. All right. For a lark, let's just pop in the USB device one last time because there is a bit of a quirk to this. So we'll see if it recognizes it. Uh, you have to dig into the menu, this C-E-O-L menu. Then you can start digging through folders, artists, albums, and just kind of whatever random stuff. Unknown artist, I think, is some of my stuff. Yeah, because I don't have the metadata for the WAV files put on there. But let's pick out something that uh, I know has metadata on it. So Susie and the Banshees, uh, their cover of uh, The Passenger, the Iggy Pop tune. And I actually kind of prefer the Susie version. But anyway, um, it will scroll... Got the album title up top. This is uh, something I downloaded at some point, legally, yes. And uh, I wound up buying the album on CD, but I wound up buying an old copy because I didn't... I thought the remaster that it touts uh, was uh, way over-compressed and over-processed. But... I liked the sound of the 80s CD, but uh, I guess Susie gets a, a little bit of royalty uh, from that. I'll just give it a little audio for a second. I Hopefully I can fly with that. So, yeah, that's uh, kind of all there is to know about the USB part of it. Uh, one last test. Let's do Bluetooth since that's kind of quirky. I found that I have to reconnect the Bluetooth every time, uh, especially if I've had my phone off at all. And it's actually recognizing my iPad. If uh, you read the top screen there, it would be nice if it would actually scroll. I saw that. Yep. My iPad isn't even in this room. I have it charging right now in the bedroom. Anyway, uh, let's just briefly do the Bluetooth thing just to show that it does work. Although the annoying part is you have to redo it every time. So I'm going to pull it up on my phone here. And... We'll go ahead and connect. So that's a thing. And I have XM all ready to go. And uh, I guess we'll just do kind of my, my usual standby, deep tracks. Of course, it's not always accurate what they say on your phone at a given moment, but I'll briefly turn up the volume here just so you know it works. And uh, once again, like all other stuff, it takes a minute to kick in. Oh wait, it is indeed spooky tooth at the moment so yeah just to, to give you a, a quick idea otherwise uh, headphone jack 
works just fine. The basic functions of this are fine, and so it's earned its keep with me. I do have my gripes about this. I, Like I've mentioned, I do have my things I do not like about this unit. I do not like that it's two and a half inches wider than what I had. I'm not looking forward to having to find a new home for some of my records. But uh, it is what it is. Time marches on. Uh, if I see some you know, more compact unit and that I know is a, a good one and I happen to have the money for it, uh, or if Santa Claus is w willing to bring it, I guess, uh, you know, I, I will reconsider and maybe sell this thing off. But as it stands, I, I think I'm okay with this. Uh, only time will tell. But yeah, I, I think I've done all the important stuff here. If you want to see a much better organized review of this, uh, go watch Techmoan's uh, review of the European version of this thing. But as for me, I think I've done what I've set out to accomplish. So yeah, I'm going to call it a day here. I'll talk to you again soon.